welcome to worship. We're so pleased that you're able to join us online today. I have just a couple of announcements I'd like to share with you about worship as we move forward throughout the summer. The first is that every Sunday, we're gonna be having a 10 a.m. outdoor worship service right out by the pond, out on the berm, so you'll need to bring a lawn chair. But that's 10 in the morning, and it's a contemporary music mix. And then starting next Sunday on the 12th of July, you're invited to a traditional worship service at 8.30 a.m. Now for this worship service, you're gonna to need to register ahead of time. And you can find out more information on our website or call the church office about how to get set up to come for that worship service. And finally, we are so disappointed not to have regular Vacation Bible School this summer, but we do have Vacation Bible School at home. And if you would like to know inf more information, you can look at our e-connections that we've sent out, or you can go to our website or call the church office for more details. But now I invite you to praise the Lord with our opening hymn. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us now confess our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ by confessing our sins to him and then hearing that wonderful promise of forgiveness. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May we pray. Almighty God, to whom our, all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now confess our sins to the Lord and then hear those words of forgiveness. May we pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. May we pray, please. Gracious Heavenly Father, your beloved Son is the way, the truth, and the life. Increase our faith. Increase our trust in Jesus, your anointed one, your beloved Son, our Lord and our King, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship 
culture is constantly shifting around us, and there are so many voices that are trying to mold and shape us into something we are not. We put on mask after mask after mask, attempting to fit in, all while shutting out who we were created to be. How do we define ourselves in a culture that defies definition? How do we stand strong in who God has created us to be while loving people well? How do we take back our true identity? Welcome everybody to St. Mark's. I'm Pastor Paul. I'm glad that you're here with us this week as we continue our sermon series called Identity Shift. I mentioned in previous weeks that we'll be having some of our micro MDiv students uh, giving our messages this summer. And so I'm here with John Mazinski, and he's one of our micro MDiv students. He's got a great message for you today from 1 Corinthians 15. And so I'm going to hand over the pulpit to, to, to John. Thanks for giving us the message today. Dear God, thank you for this glorious day and all that you have made. Please bless this message, both in its transmission and its reception, and let it move us, your children, to be your hands and feet, your servants in this time and place. Amen. Good morning. As Pastor Paul says, I'm John Mazinski. We're in our second year of study now, and and. Some of you know me from adult classes or from crossways. Some of you know me from participating in or facilitating different Bible studies. Uh, some of you know me from Alpha and uh, some of the other things I've been involved in over the last, well, nearly 40 years. I can't really be that old, can I? Uh, nah, but I'm learning so much in this course of study it's like I'm a student, a schoolboy again, uh, giddy, you know, thrilled at the prospect of driving deeper into his word and into his service. If you missed it, yesterday's portals of prayer was on equal glory. Yesterday, we celebrated our 244th birthday as a nation, but we sure had a different kind of party this time, didn't we? So around the world, patriots laud their nations as special. Americans ask if we can see the banner after the perilous fight. Englishmen remember a century when the sun never set on the empire. Canadians, just a few days ago on the first, promised to stand on guard for thee, to guard, to defend, to preserve, to shield, to secure, to keep. Now God doesn't have a favorite nation, he once did, but his chosen people forgot to remember the covenant that God had made with them. And because he anticipated this, knowing our human nature, he had an alternate plan. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that they might receive adoption as children of God. Galatians 4.4. 4. We're all adopted into God's kingdom. All are one in Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for the glory of equality in your kingdom. Who are we? Or rather, who we are. That's what I'll be talking about today. You're all ministers too. Any time or place that you worship, or go to class, or participate by adding a thought or asking a question. Anytime you meet or greet a fellow worshiper, checking in with them. Anytime you help a child with a Bible verse, or through Sunday school, or shepherding them through VBS, or the Wednesday night ministry. Any of a zillion things going on here in this building, on this property, or around the world, mostly virtually these days, but who are you ministering to today? Whose feet do you need to wash? Whose guardian angel are you? Or conversely, whose help do you need to seek out today? How is the Holy Spirit working in and through you? 
I am not the great I am, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. That's the phrase that captured my attention from the book that Paul assigned us last winter for this class. Let me repeat that. I am not the great I am, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Now, most of this comes from 1 Corinthians 15, 10, where the Apostle Paul says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect or in vain in another translation that I like a little better. So Paul considered his conversion from the persecutor of the way. <laughs> if you look in Acts 7 and especially the first verse of Acts 8, he was a big time persecutor to the apostle of the Gentiles. You know, a whole lot of the New Testament, first as a key player in Acts and, and secondly as the author of as many as 13 books, Paul considered this conversion to be a free and wholly undeserved gift of God. Romans 15, 15 and 16 states, I have written to you quite boldly on some points, as if to remind you of them again. Because of the grace of God, he gave me to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles with the priestly duty of proclaiming the gospel, the good news of God so that the Gentiles might be an offering acceptable to God, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In Galatians 1, 15 and 16, Paul says, But when God, who set me apart from birth and called me by His grace, was pleased to reveal His Son in me, so that I might preach Him among the Gentiles. In Ephesians 3, 7 and 8, Paul again says, I became a servant of the gospel of God, by the gift of God's grace given to me by the working of His power, though I am less than the least of all people. Remember Paul's humility here for the end. In Philippians 1.9, Paul says, And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. And finally, in 1 Timothy 1, verse 14, Paul states, The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. God's grace didn't lead to passivity on Paul's part, however. It prompted hard work and a lot of suffering. Now, we can't all be Paul, but we are called nonetheless to his service. Pastor Paul said it so well last week, saved and sent. As we go through this series on our identity in Christ, I feel Life is best lived when you're secure in that relationship with God. Remember how we started with, I am not the great I am, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. So let's jump into the Gospel of John for just a few words on who God really is. Recall that John is in the inner circle with Jesus. Peter, James, and John get to do a lot of big things. Think Transfiguration, think Garden of Gethsemane. He's always right there. His, he's the disciple that Jesus loved. His gospel is intensely personal. It's intimate. It's close. It's firsthand. It's eyewitness. He was at the foot of the cross with Mary. It's definitely written from the perspective of an insider. So John, if you have your Bibles with you, let's open up to chapter 8. And this particular section actually begins in verse 12 with Jesus proclaiming, I am the light of the world, his second I am in the gospel. Now, Alice preached a couple weeks ago on the seventh I am and the last one in chapter 15. And I personally challenge each of you to go through John's gospel and find them all. One of John's themes is these sets of seven, seven signs, seven days, seven hours, and seven I ams. So in his gospel, John is making it clear from the very beginning that the Word, Jesus, was God and was with God, chapter 1, verse 1, and reveals God, chapter 1, verse 18. So right away after the second I am, the Pharisees challenge him again. So in John 8, 24, Jesus says, I told you that you would die in your sins. If you did not believe that I am the one that I claim to be, you will indeed die for your sins. 
So here Jesus is echoing God's great affirmation about himself. I am the one that I claim to be. So the scribes and Pharisees ask him, who are you? In a bit more modern language, it's, who is this guy? Or who does he think he is? And so just a few verses later in John 8, 28, Jesus said to them, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am the one and that I can do nothing on my own authority, but speak just as the Father taught me. Now normally lifted up speaks of exaltation in the New Testament. But in this case, John uses it of the crucifixion. Or maybe he uses it in a double meaning like John sometimes does. Now Jesus uses the term Son of Man 81 times in the Gospels about himself. It's never used by anybody but Jesus. And back in Daniel chapter 7 in verses 13 and 14, the lowercase son of man is pictured as a heavenly figure who in the end times is entrusted by God with authority, with glory, with sovereign power. And so the scribes and the Pharisees almost certainly get this reference. And finally in John 8, 58, just in case they weren't getting it, here it comes. That proverbial two by four upside the head. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, before Abraham was, I am. Note Jesus doesn't say I was, but rather I am, expressing both the eternity of his being and his oneness with the Father. The words I am in Greek use the same expression found in God's self-identification back in Exodus 3.14 on Mount Sinai. I am who I am. So Jesus is claiming not only to be eternal, but also the same God who appeared to Moses 2,000 years ago in the burning bush. And so this brings to me that image from the Ten Commandments movie that I watch nearly every Easter. I am who I am. And his Jewish opponents immediately understood the meaning and immediately picked up stones to stone him to death for blasphemy. But he slipped away from the temple grounds. His time had not yet come. Now, we may not be like Paul, but we all have gifts that we can use in his service. God called Paul and set him apart before he was born. The emphasis here being on God's initiative, not because of anything Paul did or said. We all have God-given gifts, strengths, if you will, that are our sweet spots of service. So in closing, what are your strengths? How can you use your God-given gifts in service to others? What can you do in this time and place? One of my favorite Old Testament verses is Micah 6, 8. It states, He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Act justly. Do what is right. Love mercy. Love each other as I have loved you. Walk humbly with your God. I am not the great I am, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. May we pray. In the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now that you have heard the word of God proclaimed, We proclaim our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May we pray, please. Almighty God, you are our rock and our fortress. You are our deliverer. You are our refuge in the storms of life. And in the storms of this world that are beyond our control, we seek shelter. We know that we need not fear because you will strengthen us and help us as you uphold us with your righteous right hand. But give us the faith to believe and understand that basic truth. Watch over and give strength and healing to all in need. Be the strength of those who mourn, including Marilyn Swanson and her family as they grieve the death of her husband, Ron. Be with all who are battling cancer, including Chris and Emma. Watch over those who have been hospitalized, including Dick, Ralph, and Mike. Guide our leaders in our nation, in our state, and in our community, and throughout the world. Grant them wisdom and vision and understanding and help us as the body of Christ to continue our work as ambassadors for Christ, striving to fulfill our calling to the ministry of reconciliation. And Abba, help us as a congregation as the community of believers to seek your help and guidance in every decision and in every moment of our lives together. And Father, we ask that you'd bring healing to all who are experiencing anxiety or depression, those who are fearful, those who are separated from family and loved ones, those who are serving in harm's way in so many ways and so many different places. And it's in your hands that we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, children of God, as you go on your way, may God go with you. May he go before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together in our concluding hymn. Rain.
Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks to John for a great message. What a great reminder for us from the book of Micah of what we can do here and now to act justly, love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Thanks again for joining us today for worship. Uh, we appreciate your gifts and your offerings and want to remind you of the three ways that you can give to St. Mark's. You can donate directly online, you can text to give, or you can mail your gift right into our office. Thanks again for joining us today. We hope to see you next week either online, in person, or outdoors. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.